Well, faster, my good afternoon. Welcome along to Manx Radio's Man in Line for Wednesday, 17th of January. Alex sitting in the chair for Andy. Get well soon, Andy. What are we going to talk about today? Well, internationally, Jersey have followed Guernsey in uh, booting out their chief minister and their government following a vote of no confidence, with many members having grievances over issues including the hospital, the cost of living, a housing crisis. Hmm, all sound familiar? Whereas here on our shores, our chief minister says that uh, the southern politicians need to act like national politicians. Does that mean they have to ignore the priorities of the people they represent? Is the government... Addressing the people's priorities. All of that, along with, let's be honest, the southern swimming pool. We can talk about that um, uh, this afternoon. Um, antisocial behaviour in Laxey. Mm, um, uh, is that is it something the scourge is on the rise again? It's spreading north. Onken, we know, um, uh, for a while and still um, is known for antisocial behaviour. Um, what can be done about it? Um, in terms of Douglas Beach... Douglas Beach is going to have an experimental intensive approach where they're apparently not going to be removing vegetation from the beach. Does that mean they're just going to not bother? Going to let it go all overgrown? Is this just a a cost-cutting measure that a bit of spin is trying to wrap up in terms of um, uh, trying to get a good headline? Uh, Well... Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions on it. 66 13 68 is uh, the number to call. Um, or, of course, you can text 166 177 uh, this afternoon and um, have your opinion on air, although it would be lovely to speak to you on the phones, of course. Um, let's have a quick look. Um, uh, thank you very much to Dick, who's uh, texted in, um, saying that the Southern Six, including uh, four MHKs, saying they won't vote in favour of this year's budget if exactly what they and Tim Glover said in June 2022. Um, In the 2023 budget, they all voted in favour of it as the £11 million extra that the uh, DESC got from Treasury was meant to go in part to keeping the pool open. So how can they say they'll do the same as said in 2022 and 2023? How can any of us believe them now when the same thing happened back then and they did nothing to secure the funds? And it'll happen again with the same management in place at the DESC. Well, good point. I mean, the the budget process on the island has been one for much debate over the years, hasn't it? Because um, I know for well that the, the Speaker of the House has uh, highlighted this, but it's either a nod through all in one um, or you have to throw it out all in one. And I don't think any government has ever um, lost or had its budget thrown out. There's been a few dissenting voices, but the budget always gets through. So the question is... Um, anecdotally, you hear people say that, oh, well, Guernsey's had a change in government. Um, uh, Jersey's now had a change in government. Would it happen here? And most people's response are, no, our parliament doesn't have the backbone. So do you believe that? Do you agree with that? OK. Or is this the usual rough and tumble of uh, of politics? OK, I'd love to hear um, your views on this. Um, but as I mentioned there, the Ireland Southern MHK is saying they're not going to be giving their support to this year's budget if there's not sufficient funds allocated for the Southern Swimming Pool. Um, you've heard a lot on Manx Radio over the last week that the Department of Education, Sport and Culture will recommend the pool's closure at the end of the financial year. That's the end of the March, about two and a half months away. As a result, all four members um, representing the South have told Manx Radio they will vote against the uh, Treasury Minister's um, uh, pink book uh, when it comes up for the budget in February. Amy Griffiths has been finding out more. It's rare for a budget to pass through Timwald unanimously. Most years you get at least one dissenter, someone either objecting to a particular part or the way the budget is done in general. But four members is almost unheard of. In fact, the last time a budget on the Isle of Man was so unpopular was 30 years ago. But with just over a month to go until the contents of the 2024 Pink Book are revealed, that's exactly the situation the Treasury Minister faces. All the MHKs representing the south of the island have told me if no provision for the southern swimming pool is made, then there will be no eyes from them. Many of the southern members are already looking at what the current government's doing and asking questions over can a budget in 2024 be supported? So to come along with something this crude and this having such an impact on so many local people, you know, you're thinking, what is this government doing? Is this government completely out of touch? It's something I've actually been considering since the last budget. When I voted in favour of the last budget, I did say that it was a knife-edged thing, and I was actually considering at that point not supporting the budget in 2023. So it's going to be 
increasingly difficult to say I will support it. The budget is the fundamental aspect of the government. And if you vote against that, you're saying, I'm voting completely against your plans for the next 12 months and the future. So it is a big decision to make. But at the moment, it's the way I'm going, definitely. Probably more resolute than I was before. I gave them the benefit of the doubt last time because there was a promise that the capital projects were coming through and that the high school would come through. We've had conflicting reports back from the department about whether a new pool was going to be part of the the design for Castle Russian, which is the stage that they're in at the moment or not. But notwithstanding that, nothing will happen on that Castle Russian building site effectively until 2029. And you cannot close a pool down now in 2024 and then wait five years to replace it. And there's no promise in anything we've seen from the department so far that there will be a swimming pool replacement going on to that site. And so if if yeah, I'm I'm not able to support anything that doesn't include that. Well, Treasury and the Education Department are going to have to rope back substantially because I'm not in a position where I can support a budget. This report was due in October, of course. If it had been announced then, that would have given time for a bit more consideration. It is the budget next month. I've already written to the Chief Minister and Treasury Minister. I, I set out some priorities last year and the year before in the budget around getting Castle Russian High School built, about the budget reform process which has been going on a long time and about the high street in Port St Mary. There's been no significant progress on any of those fronts. So I think it's going to be a really uphill battle for the Treasury Minister to get my vote. So Jason Morehouse, Michelle Hayward, Tim Glover and Dewan Watterson are all fairly resolute in their lack of support for the budget as things stand. But let's pick up on the points Mr Watterson made there. This report was supposed to be released in October. The recommendation to close the pool will be made by the Education Minister in February's Timwald, which is when the budget will be debated and voted on by members. Traditionally, that happens ahead of any other order of business. So, in theory, could Timwald approve a budget which has no funding for the Southern Swimming Pool and then vote against a recommendation to close it? And if it could, where would that leave the Treasury Minister? I did ask Dr Alex Allenson for an interview to clarify exactly that, but on this occasion he declined. Tony Brown is a former Chief Minister and, during his many years as an MHK, represented Castletown. I asked him what he thinks about the timing of the announcement. It seems obvious that what has happened is that the Department has just not made any provision, Department Store Government, in the Pink Book to fund through a deficiency payment the regional pool in the south and uh, that therefore has to be endorsed by Tinwald because otherwise I think that goes against what had been indicated before that Tin will be involved in this decision and uh, you've got a budget book that by the sounds of it may well not provide any financial support whatsoever and I suspect it doesn't based on what's been said now to fund the uh, southern swimming pool the National Swim Pool has been provided totally at the taxpayer's expense and is funded totally at the taxpayer's expense with no contribution from anybody in the area from their rates. My view on the answer to this is there should be something like an all island leisure charge. It doesn't need to be a very expensive one, but if you did that, the amount of money then the department, if it is that desperate to get funds in, uh, would be able to achieve. While having four Timwald members oppose a budget is rare, it wouldn't be enough to stop the pink book getting the seal of approval. The Southern MHKs would have to go on a recruitment drive to derail it completely. So the question is, will it sink or will it swim? Thank you very much, Amy Griffiths there. And that, that's a point. Is it just political uh, meandering and political posturing in, in terms of um, uh, the Parliament and the government? Are they completely out of touch? Because if four members vote against it, so what? It'll still go ahead. The budget will still go ahead. OK, they might feel better for having voted against it and they might be able to stand on a doorstep, but the action will still happen. OK, does it take more than that? Is it showing how, quite frankly, that, that there's no teeth in Timwald in order to push these things through? Or is this the way it's always been? I'd be, I'd love to hear your opinion um, when it comes to um, the Southern Swim Pool or the political process in general. Um, let's go straight to the phones then. Um, Eddie is uh, the first one on this morning. And he's got a... Uh, Eddie, are you giving me a thought for the day, I believe? It's a green thought for the day. I've been doing it for a few weeks now. Excellent. Fire away. 
Yeah, well, just before I do, actually, can I just give my opinion for the swim, the swim pool? Please do. Yeah. Um, I've not heard any mention about balacamine in any of this. Um, what it will consist of, if the government go ahead with what they want, is every swimming pool will be the other side of Ferry Bridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one in Castletown, it doesn't only do all the schools in the south. It's a public swimming pool. It, it's it's just got everything. And if I remember the last contro- controversy with Julie Edge about all these pools, I asked, I asked her if she could swim. She can't swim. I asked her if any of her kids could swim. And she said one of her kids is learning to swim. And guess where it was? Balakameen. Well, Balakameen has had a, um, an upgrade. There was thousands spent on it, I think, a year or so ago. Mm-hmm. But over the last eight or nine years, I think it is, 19,000 quid. I think it's a disgrace. I think uh, the best thing that this lady could do is, is actually resign. Well, uh, because it's just dis- disastrous, honestly, everything she's done about the pool. And I think, like you say, the Alaman is going to end up with uh, the people here saying no confidence at all. Well, I put it to you, Eddie, then, that you mentioned there about no pool south of Ferry Bridge. It was said to me yesterday um, that um, we uh, the, the, the chief minister has no ministers in his uh, council <laughs> of ministers south of Middle. And then he's quoted yesterday, we got an interview with him, saying that the southern MHKs need to be reminded that they are national politicians too. Um, do you feel that because there's no representation around the chief minister's table south of um, Middle, that this is this is an issue that the southern uh, the southern region gets forgotten about? It shouldn't be that, should it? It shouldn't have anything to do with it. That about how many you know, there are. It should be a fact of do we need it or do we not? I think I gave uh, Andy a, a statistic last week mm-hmm. of Manx records that have been achieved over the years. And there was a uh, 140 uh, records achieved, and 77 of those were from the Southern Swimming Club. So it, it speaks for itself, really. And Tony Brown sums it all up, doesn't it? It, it has got to stay. If you are going to take another 10 years to start the new school, you need a swimming pool in between. Okay. It's got to stay going. Okay, anyway, Eddie, go on. Give me, give me your thought for the day, so we can get into some other calls right. as well. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what it was, it was for the past um, three or four days, I've been trying to get some information um, and I've eventually got it. What it's concerning, green-wise, is the wind turbines which have been put up all over America. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, the information I was trying to get was this. There are thousands and thousands of um, dormant, I think they've got a special name for it, it's orphaned, wind turbines Mm -hmm. they are dumped left lying stored if i tell you that in in uh, sweetwater state there are 30 acres of wind turbines and blades just lying there and a lot of what's happening throughout the world is that to begin with governments give them um, money towards all these things grants and and so forth and once all that runs out some of the companies, these large companies, try to sell them on to smaller companies, and the, the, some of them don't want them. They can't sell them. So they end up getting dumped. So that's why all across America and so forth, these things are getting dumped. <clears throat> and if you look at Orsted itself, I mean, last October, their shares went down 55%. Siemens um, branch of, their, of Siemens... Um, the the turbine side itself are two pound two million pound two billion pounds in debt. You know, it's it's an absolute disgrace, really. The, but Eddie, the, I'll, I'll I want to know from your perspective then, because you I, I know you you're not in favour of turbines. What is the difference between um, turbines that have reached the end of their life as mechanical equipment? Um, and costing more to either bin off, uh, replace, um, dispose of than the fact that we've got a whopping great big gas power station here which we took out huge borrowings for, which we're still paying for, hundreds of millions of pounds. When that comes to the end of its life, we will have to dispose of all the 
the technology that's in there, all the all the equipment that's in there, it's a different form of power generation, surely, with the same sorts of challenges that are equally as costly. That's only if you go a different way. I, I uh, mentioned- well, no, because we're still going to be we're still in our existing power generation. Someone has to create power with machines. Machines don't last forever, so you will still yeah. have wastage at the end. So, what, what what's your point about the fact that one form of power generation you're going to go down will will have a lifespan because all power generation has lifespans. Well, my, a lot of my green comments are this. I mean, when when they give you the spiel about how they're selling them and so forth, mm-hmm. um, they tell you that they have a lifespan of 25 years to 30 years. Yep. Well, we, we've proved that all around the world, some of these things are giving up after six years. So, you, you know, some of this, you've got to understand that these companies are giving you, they're trying to sell you something. Yes. And everywhere throughout the world that they've sold these things, uh, it's it's gone the other way. It is now becoming to, uh, so expensive to to, uh, um, to get electricity from wind. Plus, it, they found out it's not reliable. So, what would your what would your what would your alternative be then, Eddie? If you don't want wind power, how what what power generation that has machinery that doesn't break down that lasts beyond its mm-hmm. lifespan? Would you suggest? Right from the beginning, I have said the most important thing is we don't go one way. We look at everything. In the meantime, I've been told by people who work at the um, power station at the moment that there's a good no, a good 20 years left in that one yet. So uh, a lot of people are suggesting that they're trying to rush this through before the election. Right, prove us wrong and just halt everything and give a thought to everything else. I mean, m- mine is water. That is my... One or nuclear, nuclear or water, and both of those, I presume, using your argument back to you, both of those have machinery that won't break down and has extended lifespans. Well, the Laxi wheel has lasted how long? And how many times has it been repaired? The original Laxi wheel isn't even in there, Eddie. You and I know that the uh, the 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 spokes of the wheel are actually now metal encased in in wood. We've spent millions on it, so the the whole idea that it's the original wheel is not a very good argument. Well, why not? Because the, we, technology has moved on. We don't. We're, lo- we're not looking at wheel. I gave um, uh, um, whirlpool, uh, which is fantastic. Um, uh, uh, the river screws, you name it. We've got. Uh, the, there was a. Uh, um, I, I told Andy to let everybody know about a documentary that was on the television, Ice on Fire. Mm. Now, in that one, the, the marine technology is just getting so good. In fact, even Rishi Suma, Sunak, or whatever his name is, he is actually now giving incentives to all entrepreneurs to go that way and not win power. If we want, I'm going to write a letter to, I'm, I'm finishing off with my green things because uh, the, the amount of people I talk to now up there saying, oh, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. And they are against them. And I think, you know, like if you want to vote for confidence in the government, just ask the people what they think about these things. And we should look at everything else before we do anything else. OK, thank you very much, Eddie. Um, good to hear from you. That's uh, Eddie's green thought of the day. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you're welcome to come in with your opinion. Uh, 66, 13, 68. Ah, um, uh, oh, Mr Quirk has been waiting uh, patiently. Um, afternoon, David. How you doing, mate? You were quite right at the beginning there. We had a, uh, a letter that was dropped in to Manx Radio under confidential, uh, not confidentially, it's been breached. So why are we actually printing what the letter says and finding out what discussion took place between the board, the Southern Board and education? It's in the public domain now. Somebody needs to put that into the public domain in total so we can find out, did they discuss any options? Were there any other alternatives than actually shutting the place my opinion is, and I'm not an expert, is that the pool itself doesn't seem to me uh, past its best. There's a few years le- life left in it. We need to find out that, out that out. And the other thing is, I know four MHKs beating their chest uh, regarding the budget. That's going to do, and you're correct, do absolutely nothing. By law, in the Isle of Man, our statute says we have to have a budget. Now, whether that budget is for £10 or £20 or £100 is to be decided. People voting against it, and years ago they used to be because the Liberal Valen didn't like it. And now we've got a minister in health, haven't we? 
He's a Liberal Bannon uh, expert. It'd be interesting to find out what he thinks what the budget should be or when it comes about. The only thing I would agree, Alex, study for whinging on a little bit. It's not like uh, you, David. The, <laughs> the Speaker of the House of Keys yep. has a valid point regarding discussion with the, with the population about the bu- budget in advance, what mm. people would like to do. And I'm sure if we had that, they'd say to him, like Tony Brown was great. I'll give you an example on that. Uh, years ago, he said the corporation wouldn't play ball down at the, the bowl for the new uh, football facility that we, we were planning. So they were going to compulsory purchase it. So what did they do? The politicians got together. Uh, they said, this is the best idea ever. And look at the facilities we got down there. They may be not as clean and tidy. The seats won't rep- some of the replacing. But you've got a fabulous asset. Even when it snows, you can still use it. So you use the, um, the, uh, um, the same scenario there. Get the politicians together and come up with solutions. I know Mr. Watson must have 100 solutions how to fund it, and it could be at island rate. Well, David, um, I, I bring to you as uh, you know a former MHK. Um, a number of comments I've had is that um, do you think our politicians at the moment are are, are strong enough? Because there's been a couple of occasions. The DOI is a prime example where Tim Wald has told them to do something. Um, you know, yeah. go away and come up with a plan for a Douglas bus station, and they come back without one. It's almost like the executive, the government, um, hears from the Parliament, sticks two fingers up at the Parliament, and the Parliament just accepts it and moves on. Um, do you feel well, that actually we need more more action, as you say? Back in the example you've just given, Tony Brown said, no, we're not having this, and this was put into place. Correct. We need more discussion. The Council, of, I don't know whether, I have no idea where the Council of Ministers, probably I'm not on there, well, I am on one of the Christmas cards lists for um, <laughs> council of ministers, <laughs> and I still get a card from a mate of mine, and he lives in Peel. That's the hint. Mm-hmm. So, the, at the end of the day, they need to talk to the politicians. I remember when Tony Brown used to come down to the canteen, he'd speak to the the new members uh, when I was a fresh member at the time, 2006. He used to say to me, "What's wrong?" And I used to say to him, "I'm not happy with this." I'm not happy with that, or I don't grasp this. What's going to happen if that? We had lots of discussion. And the members who are under the minister in a department, say the DOI or health, had a say and exercised their uh, their expertise in certain things. Well, minister, I don't like that. Well, minister, the ministers used to say, well, if you don't like it, away you go. Well, that's fine, but sometimes a minister has to listen to his members and listen to the people who are in the Isle of Man and say to them, do we want to do this? Do we want to lose the pool for the sake of doing something different? And that's the argument. OK, thank you, David. Lovely to speak to you. Um, uh, and uh, David Quirk there talking about uh, Southern Pool and uh, government in general. Uh, if you've got any opinions on the uh, the Southern Pool um, or uh, generally the way that, that this situation has been handled, do get in touch, 66 13 68. Um, the other question is that it's... A service. Are the government there to, and I'm saying the parliament and the government, they're two different things, are the government there to serve us, the people who pay for it, or are they there to service what they think is in the best interest of government? There's two very different things, okay? Um, say, for example, we always talk about things like what makes a loss? This makes a loss. The Villa Marina, this lot, makes a loss this much each year. No, it's a government service. It's the cost of a service. You, you hear um, the media and politicians, when they're wanting to scaremonger, regularly talk about um, the, the Villa Marina, something you like, um, that makes a loss. The horse trams make a loss. They never talk about the hospital making a loss. Interesting choice of language, isn't it? They never talk about the bus service making a loss or an economic contribution. They never talk about whether, you know, the swimming pools are there as a service. It's what we pay our taxes for. Now, they not might want to spend the money on it, but maybe we want our money spent on that. OK? It's a very interesting conversation, isn't it? Uh, Julian's been waiting patiently. We'll get to him just after this. Oh. Next week. 
Uh, the man in line through until uh, just before one o'clock. Uh, another chance to look back at some of our 60th um, year broadcasting um, uh, just before then. Kelly's Eye, uh, David Collister and Peter Kelly along just before uh, one for that. Uh, thank you to Phil who says, has Eddie got his facts right? What about the redundant oil rigs that have to be scrapped? One uh, one year ago, um, uh, sorry, years ago, it was proposed to be sunk um, with all the oil slurry still inside it. So this was one um, oil rig. Fortunately, this didn't happen. And uh, regarding his argument about nuclear, how does that pan out with nuclear waste having a half-life of thousands of years, which has to be buried, or with the stuff still sitting in pools in Sellafield? Give me wind power any time, says Phil. Um, this was the point I was trying to make. Eddie um, feels that um, there's a big negativity towards wind turbines and is pointing out all the negatives. Um, but what are the other options? Okay, in power generation. And you can't turn around and say that um, the wind turbines will produce waste once they've got to the end of their op- occupational life or operational life, whereas every other form of power generation also does. So that that's not an argument for um, not having wind power. You might have other very viable arguments, but uh, I, I don't feel that, that that's one of them. Um, uh, here we go. Andy. Um, hi, Alex. Fast am I. Just like in the states of Jersey, removing their leader, can listeners say if there will be a vote of no confidence here? For example, in the current DESC minister. Uh, thank you, Andy, for that one. And um, Jason says, would the all-island rate system have stopped this nonsense with closing down the southern swimming pool? Um might have done, Jason. You have to bear in mind, of course, that um, the pools are managed differently. Um, at Department of Education, um, at Sport and Culture manage the, the NSC, um, the, the Southern Swimming Pool, the uh, Balakameen Swimming Pool, and uh, the uh, the Ramsey Pool, also the Peel Pool. Um, uh, whereas, of course, you've got the King Williams Pool, which is a private pool. And they had, of course, a planning proposal a number of years ago to uh, replace it. And that... Um, that did not go through because of objections. Uh, Julian's on. He's been waiting very patiently. Good afternoon, Julian. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? I'm not so bad, mate. How are you? All right, yeah. Uh, just a quick one in regard to what Eddie said earlier as well. Yeah. Um, nuclear, coal, gas, um, they're all on throughout the year, about 98% of the time. Onshore wind averages around 20%, so you've got 80%. And if they're going to get rid of all the fossil fuels, this doesn't take into account the other 80%, which is all our heating needs that we need throughout the winter, because it's kind of cold out there. I mean, it was uh, below freezing this morning. So um, wind turbines are not going to provide that. But if you forget about all the um, subsidies that are getting pulled from these wind farms and Orsted losing 55%, and I think it's 60% now, they're crowing about inflation as a reason why um, they're not finding it viable. Well, hang on a minute. The reason that inflation is so high is because a lot of these turbines and uh, solar panels require a heck of a lot of um, fossil fuels, as they call it, mm-hmm. to make like concrete, like reinforced steel, like propane for the blades, like, you know, cutting up and digging out balsa wood for the cause. It does seem to be a, a common denominator, doesn't it, Julian, in terms of um, a, a, any... Oh. Green t- yeah, so, the irony is these wind turbines, they're having a problem financially because the stuff that it's made from is more expensive. So it's kind of a circular argument, isn't it? It is. Sorry, I had to poke over you there. Um, it's a, it seems to be a common denominator with a lot of the... Um, uh, uh, when it comes to going green with uh, electric cars, different types of electric power generation, is that as long as there is no emission um, at the point of where it's being used, so the power generation or your car, we almost seem to uh, try and forget the carbon footprint um, elsewhere as if it's someone else's problem. Is, is, is that just my, my perception? I don't know. Did you see the um, double-decker electric bus in London? Do you see the emissions from that? I oh. reckon the cloud was visible from space. <laughs> Are you talking about the one that caught fire, maybe? Yes, the yes. one in Wimbledon Hill. Yeah. So what's uh, your... Uh, I mean, I put it to Eddie. I'll put the same one to you, Julian. If if we do... Um, you know, we're signed up to reduce our carbon emissions. One of our biggest uh, emissions on the island is our power generation, quite naturally. Um, if we're having a lot of more air source heat pumps now have to be fitted into houses because we're not allowed fossil fuel boilers, that means more electricity is required. What would be your personal choice... Um, to uh, basically satisfy our power needs? Uh, we should never have signed up to net zero. It can never be achieved, especially when you've got China, India, Pakistan, 
Iran everywhere else going the other way, putting in hundreds of uh, coal and gas power stations. Uh, there's over 2,000 scientists at clintel.org who are all highly credentialed in atmospherics, et cetera, et cetera, saying there is no climate emergency. This is just natural influence by the sun. Happens every 400 years. Don't fix what ain't broke. Get the gas out and maybe um, spend some of that um, money that we get from that on geothermal so that we're not so reliant on the external fuel sources as well. You know, but, if, but we could run on Kroger gas anyway. I mean, I don't see why we have to uh, sacrifice it off to the world uh, financial markets when we could use it ourselves. So basically, I mean, the, the, you know, we shouldn't have done this is, is great hindsight. So in your point of view, we should actually pull out of existing agreements and basically paddle our own canoe. Absolutely. And, you know, um, whatever... whatever you know, regardless of what anyone says, the, the, the argument trying to be made that the Isle of Man makes any kind of a, a dent in uh, carbon emissions. And actually, carbon dioxide is the uh, gas of life. You know, if, uh, if it gets much lower, I mean, you know, please explain to me why 150 million years ago, when it was 10 times as much carbon dioxide, there was two miles of ice right above where we're living now and across North America. If it's supposed to be a warming thing, how can it be 10 times higher and there's two miles of ice above Chicago, for example? I'm, I'm not going to lie. I do quite a bit of research for the man in line, but that one's not on the tip of my tongue, I'm afraid, Julian. So I can't <laughs> answer that question. Um, <laughs> Southern Swimming Pool. Yes, go on. Um, the petition online and offline is uh, approaching three and a half thousand votes um, and going quickly. So it will be triple um, Julie Edge's uh, vote that got her into Timwell mm -hmm. uh, shortly. Um Question, isn't closure of the Southern Swimming Pool going to be a national problem if the National Sports Centre in Douglas is inundated by the eight schools in the south that are going to require swimming lessons? You'll be having adults travelling there to keep up with their health. And then what about health? Isn't it a national issue if thousands of people who would customarily swim you know, they're not going to be going into Douglas or Peel. You know, they, they don't want to be driving or taking a bus an extra 20 miles. If they become sicker because they can't keep up with their health regimes, isn't that going to stretch health resources at Nobles? Um, you know, that's a national thing. Um, isn't it a national and an international issue if you're worried about pollution when eight schools are going to have to be bussed every day through the school week? Uh, what about all the tarmac that's going to be required for extra road repairs? And, so, you know, the, if this isn't a national issue when you're going to be um, taking out one of the four, you know, pools on the island, it's even if people some people have said, I don't swim, therefore I don't care. It should be shut immediately. Uh, well, you won't mind queuing extra um, going into Douglas then when you've got a, a shed load more buses, more cars. You know, it, there may be somebody in Douglas that likes going swimming at the NSC. They're going to get fed up when they can't get a lane in the pool because they say, well, sorry, but there's five doing circles in, that, in, the, in every lane. You know, do you really want to go swimming now? Mm. So it is a national issue, isn't it? Well, you, you make a very strong point there. I mean, uh, you yourself, uh, Julian, without prying into your private life, it's a bit like saying, uh, have you been to the hospital for treatment this year? I'm, I'm betting because yeah, I look after myself and I keep my vitamin D levels up. Well, there you go, you see. But I presume you don't expect the hospital to be closed because you've not used it this year. No, that's right. Or maybe, you know, the Your person house... that was uh, texting in the other day, maybe they like going to see football matches on the island. Well, hang on, we won't fund any more football pitches, so all the, all the local footballers will have to shut down because that's technically a minority. Or, um, yeah, as you said, the buses, let's just shut them down. You know, will people be happy if all the bus services shut because it's not making a profit? Now, you know, uh... statutory boards again. Yeah, very good point. Uh, final one, Julian, I'll put to you. Do you feel, I, I put this to the Chief Minister when he was on a few weeks ago, do you feel that a lot of the problems that we're now experiencing, uh, we know full well that it's blamed on COVID, it's blamed on inflation, it's blamed on the war in Ukraine. Do you also feel that a lot of our financial problems uh, is the fact that we've been running a deficit for many years, which had been topped up by reserves, but we then spent like drunken sailors when it came to um, buying the steam packet, the Liverpool ferry terminal. We've spent so much and big, big, big money projects that the money's just not there. Well, you could also argue drunken gamblers because how much was the um, debt on the swimming... Um, sorry, I've got swimming pool on the mind here. On the power station, because haven't they just borrowed another 400-odd million to pay off the debt from the previous one, probably at a higher interest rate? I mean, you know, is, is it? would anybody recommend borrowing at a higher rate to pay off an earlier debt. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem good. But if we just talk about the figures, it turns out that one of the um, financial reasons to shut the swimming pool 
uh, bandied around contains £133,000 for depreciation of the pool. Well, that doesn't affect cash flow. No. And, you know, it's 50 years old. I mean, it, when you put depreciation there, I mean, what is it worth? I mean, Dandara may, t- may take a different view on knocking the pool down and building a bunch of houses. You don't know. Um, there's also uh, a quarter of a million almost has been reduced on the um, um, pension liability. So there's an overhead that's disappeared, which is quite significant. So if we're talking about 400K and then all of a sudden 133K of it is guesswork for depreciation and you've dropped a quarter of a million on the pension liability, it starts looking like small change, doesn't it? It does. Um, Julian, someone has texted in and pointed out that at the beginning of this uh, conversation, you said just a quick one. Um, so I'm going to have to move on to Paul Vivian. But thank you very much for your call. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a quick one. <laughs> it's always a quick one. Uh, nice to hear from Julian there. Um, definitely got his hands on the figures, let's be honest. Um, in terms of the 400 million borrowing from re- recollection, um, but because it did uh, go to a Timwall vote, didn't it, that the government um, borrowed 400 million, uh, of which it was borrowed at a very low interest rate. Um, at uh, the time of just post-COVID and uh, some of the money was um, going towards the uh, the purchase of the Manxman which was obviously a loan um, to the steam packet um, but there's more details about that if you go to manxradio.com Right, um, uh, Vivian, I'm, I'm straight When the man in line's not on air call Manx Radio to leave your opinion for broadcast on 682 631 Man in line for Manx Radio, quarter to one now. And um, apparently, by the way, the uh, the full sister report, uh, which was promised in Timwald yesterday, it was going to be uh, published today, has been uh, published. And um, yeah, there's 65 plus pages talking about the curtailing of the steam railway south of Castletown and the electric railway north of Laxey. Question is, who had the mandate to do that? OK, if you want to have a look through um, any of the uh, the manifestos for your MHKs, who suggested that we were going to start scrapping heritage railways? I've invited um, the minister, Tim Crookle, and uh, the CEO, Emily Curphy, onto the programme um, a couple of times. And um, I, I've not received an email back um, to confirm it. So it must be in a fridge with Boris somewhere. Um, but yes, um, we do keep asking the question. Um, what's going to be happening? There's another service um, that, you know, apparently has an economic boost of 17 million, uh, yet we're not interested in exploiting it. Now, more on the Southern Swimming Pool. Uh, Vivian's on the line, I've been waiting patiently. Good afternoon, Viv. Good afternoon, Alex. I'm nearly asleep here waiting for you. <laughs> I do apologise. Uh, Julian's quick one was a little more than a quick one. Um, I know the... What would you like right. to say about the pool? I would would like to know why, and this is a question that's so often answered, but it never gets an answer, why do Laxey, Onken, Douglas, Braddon never pay any swimming pool rates? If you had that money, it would help the situation no end over the four pools. So basically you're saying, because currently the pools obviously are taken out of, you know, your central taxation um, in terms of... Um, at yes, the, the NSC but stuff. because Douglas gave them the land, mm-hmm. they don't think they should pay for it. Yes, all the rest of us pay for our local swimming pool. Right. So why don't those areas pay for it? I know somebody will come back and say, oh, blah, 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 blah. But I'm sorry, it would put an awful lot of money back in the kitty. Do you feel that Tony Brown's point of maybe an all-island leisure rate is a is a route to go down? No, forget that. Just if everybody pays what they should be paying. We In... pay it for everything else. We all pay for the sewerage. We all pay for the water. We pay for our refuse. We pay for everything else. So why should part of the island pay for this thing and the rest of the... the um, the people with more money in that area, bigger areas, don't pay a set cent towards it. How would that work? Because if I pay my rates and um, my rates, as you say, cover for refuse, water uh, and things like that, but I then go and use a swimming pool which is outside of my rateable area, outside of my parish, outside of my local authority, effectively, if I went to the Ramsey pool, for example, and you're paying for the Ramsey pool, and I'm outside of that catchment area, you're paying for me to enjoy that facility, aren't you? Yes, but you're also paying to go in through the door, which I have no objections to. I have no objections to anybody using anything that mm-hmm. they pay for. But Douglas Doon and Onken and Braddon do not contribute towards Douglas Pool. Okay. 
thank you very much for that, Vivian. Lovely to talk to you. And uh, you can go back to sleep now. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Alex. <laughs> we'll talk properly one day. We will. <laughs> um, thank you very much to um, Vivian News on that. We've got a few minutes uh, left. And um, let's see who else we've got on the phone, Zoo. Um, we've got Jenny on the line. Uh, Jenny, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, I'm going to be quick, but yeah. I have a bit of a theory, and I do realise that I should be wearing a tinfoil hat whilst I say this, but it's oh, just right. a thought, and I wondered if any other people had thoughts on it. All of the advanced societies from the past, like the Aztecs and the Incas, who were very advanced for their time, mm -hmm. eventually died out. Nobody really knows why that happened. They just disappeared. Are we heading the same way? Have we become so advanced and hitting whatever problem they hit? We're starting to go backwards way with things like the post plane disappeared. We started off with the Pony Express many years ago. Mm -hmm. Advanced the post plane, now we're going backwards way. All of these services provided, probably from started in Victorian times, Industrial Revolution. We've advanced and advanced in my life to pe time people walked on the moon, if you believe that. Um, we had Concord and all of this, and now all of that's gone. And now we just, have we reached the point where we're not going to advance any further, despite all the technology? Whatever happened to those advanced societies, now we're going backwards way and all these services and everything are being withdrawn. And we're just going to go back to the beginning and whatever happened to them is going to happen to us. Do you feel maybe it's, uh, I, I would possibly argue, I'm a little more optimistic, that um, <laughs> may, may, maybe it's a lack of vision. The the one thing the Victorians would do, I mean, if you look out on Douglas Promenade, I look out the window here, and the Promenade is, is a glorious bay that the Victorians created. Mm -hmm. If we went along now to a natural um, bay where there's nothing and it's all natural, can you imagine the government or the planning committee giving you permission to build what they built here in Douglas? They wouldn't do it. Because the Victorians had vision and they just got on with stuff. And we nowadays, well, we have to get this person, we have to think of this person. All the accountants will tell us there's no return on investment. Do you think that there's no vision to do anything? Um, I, I'm, yes, absolutely. And my way of thinking of term it is that have people, have society got too big for its boots, if we want to put it that way, that anything that, any progress or anything now, there's a million and one reasons why you can't do it. So we're just going to go backwards way. We're not going to advance any further. Is that what happened to these societies? Like you say, there's this committee, that committee, this investigation, that. I mean, is that what happened to them, that nothing could progress beyond a certain point? Because everybody had a, a something to say about it. And do you see what I'm trying to say? Maybe yeah. that's what happened to them. Too many committees, too many this, too many reasons why not. Not enough funding. We spent too much money on this in the wrong place. And now it's just not, I hate the word, sustainable anymore. I mean, well, how would you say then, if, if that's the case, if that's, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling that society is breaking down because nobody will dare to put their head above the parapet and do what is good for society... Um, and good for the the public and have it, you know, it's all now economic this and this report and that and, report. And removing the things that have already been established, yeah. yeah. What, what what would you do? So if I turned around and said, actually, OK, you have the power, Jenny. Um, I'll give you the, you know, the benevolent dictator for life sort of title. What would you what would you do? What would be one of the first things you'd do that would improve things? Well, as long as I could have a big hat and I would ward myself lots of medals... <laughs> <laughs> away from that, away from that, you know. Right. Um, I would put everything to the people because whatever the people say, and I, I look at social media, I listen to the man in line, so much dis, you know, discontent at the moment with things that government are doing and this board and this council and these commissioners and that. And people are saying, you know, lots of the term keyboard warriors. People have got lots to say and surely if the people in power looked at that, they'd say, well, hang on a minute, are we actually doing the right thing? Is this what the people of the Isle of Man want? Should we not ask them and have, uh, you know, actually get people's opinions? Because that is just not happening. They just ride up, seem to be riding roughshod over what everybody else you know, what the, the majority may be, I don't know, I, I, you know, I haven't done my own poll. You know, if, it, if I was in power, if I had an idea, I think it was uh, a famous Monty Python and the Holy Grail, an autonomous collective. Yes. <laughs> you know, you, you, you would ask the people on big important 
things and see, well, what this is their money. What do they want us to spend it on? Are we doing the right thing? Because there seems to be a lot of people saying we're not doing the right thing, so surely the right thing is to actually hold some sort of meaningful, um, you know, debate with the public on this and actually go with what the people want. After all, the people put them there to represent their wishes, but they don't seem to be representing people's wishes. They just seem to be going off and doing their own thing. OK, Jenny, um, we're out of time, but thank you for that. I, I do possibly think, though, that um, the fall of the Inca civilization didn't start with the removal of the a, uh, the mail plane, I have to say. I don't know, it was the swimming pool. Oh, the, the swimming, swimming pool. pool, sorry, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. Well, there we go. There's a bit of a lighter one to finish on. Is society about to crumble? Or are all our politicians... Going to go the way of the dinosaurs, who knows? Thank you for your company this afternoon. Stick around, we're going back into 60 years of broadcasting with Peter Kelly and David Collister next. I shall be back at three. Until then, have a lovely afternoon. Christy's up next. Take care, ta-da.